Well, um, it will be difficult for me to say a thing like that. I believe that in terms of personal belief in relation to um, brilliance, in relation to understanding around public policy issues, I would say, yes, my, my bet will be on Dr. Baumia in terms of assessing the five people in the race now. Of course, I will rate him over, over Ken, over Uswe Free Akuto, over Adai Nimo, and um, who else is the other person in it. Now, the challenge is, it's not just an MPP affair. The, the MPP thing is basically electing someone. The major thing is about the national elections. Mm. I think that is where, as a political party, I believe they are not just looking at who is brilliant, who understand the policy issues, who has oratory skills and all of that. But who is it that when we present to Ghanaians, Ghanaians would say, well, we can have confidence and trust in this person to lead this country and improve our living standards. And that is where I believe that among the contestants now within the MPP, Dr. Baumia has the biggest problem. Because as things are now, if you are coming from the MPP, one of the things that you have to be able to do is to actually try to depart from the Ecufuado record in order to have public trust and public confidence. And at this stage, certainly the only person in, in the, in the, the, within the five member group who appeared to begin to sound that narrative is Kenne Japon. And that is why I can understand um, Eduji when he says, look, the person that we think could even make, I mean, give us a run for our money, maybe Ken. It's not just about his rhetoric, unconventional politics, people say he's the Trump-like candidate and so on. But here is somebody who has started saying, look, me, I haven't been a minister before. I haven't been in cabinet before. I'm a businessman, I'm an MP. And look at how many people I've employed. So if I say I'll create jobs, look at even single-handedly, I'm employing this number of people. So I know what I'm talking about. Somebody who has you know, been criticizing the party when it comes to corruption, Recently, we saw the audio. Of course, he had to come to say, well, the context was different and all of that. Hmm. Somebody who says, look, if I were to give you a record of the people in government who are involved in Galamse, people will run away from this country. So in terms of the ability to let Ghanaians know that, yes, I'm an MPP member, but I don't represent the record over the last seven years, that will be Ken. Hmm. Certainly, Dr. Baumia will have a difficulty in terms of policy credibility and the trust that people must have in a candidate in order to vote for the, for the him. point there is that the npp differ with you and disagree with you on the basis that they believe they have a record which is superior um and that uh, ukraine and then COVID aside uh they would have done a lot more better and even in the midst of that there's a lot that they can account for to win an election so they, they clearly don't need someone who wants to detach himself from the, the, the regime. Well, uh, Samson, I, I, I don't expect people in the MPP to publicly say that they don't have a record. I mean, that, that, that would mean they shouldn't even contest in the first place. Mm. Certainly, we have friends in the MPP. We have brothers and sisters in the MPP. Behind the scenes in private conversations, they confess and tell, tell, will tell you, look, things are, things are bad, things are difficult. And not just, not just um, even uh, people in, 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 in private conversations. Mm. Even in this contest, you've had people beginning to say, when I come, I will do this. In fact, the president himself says that where well, the next president will make things better, mm. will make lives better. It was Dr. Baumia during the campaign in 2016 who questioned, ah, how come if it is about a global crisis, how did it escape Cote d'Ivoire? How did it escape Togo? How did it escape this country and only came to land here in Ghana? 
It is not for an MPP person to tell me about the exchange rate, mm. what it was and what it is today. Samson, you remember, only in 2021, when we did the request uh, for uh, access to information with Minerals Commission, and they asked us to pay um, the equivalent of 1,000 CDs. <laughs> you remember that in the stories that we produced, we basically said that Minerals Commission is requesting that we pay 5,800, which is the equivalent of 1,000 um, dollars before they grant us the information that we have requested. Today, if it were today that we are doing that story, we will be saying that Minerals Commission is asking us to pay 12,000. And I'm talking about between 2021 and now, from 5,800 mm. to 12,000. Mm. I don't think that it is. it, it would take an MPP person to tell Ghanaians that, look, we have a record on this. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Baumia, of course, was touted as the economic waste kid, right. the person who knows about the economy, mm. and so on. So I think that he'll be a tough sell, you know, uh, for, for the MPP. He'll, be a, he'll said, be a tough sell. My, my final question to you, and in the same frame as I asked you earlier, if Dr. Baumia and Ken were presented to you to pick one for president of Ghana, who will you pick? <laughs> Well, um, answer my question. Answer my question. Don't run away from it. Who will you pick? So I'm saying that would be that would be a tough one for me because, as I've told you, um, and I need to also really say that, as vice president, given the nature of our constitution, one needs to acknowledge that there are certain limitations in terms of what the vice president can do and what he cannot do. Um, I haven't. I haven't asked if you are supporting any one of them or anything like that. I'm just saying, you are a Ghanaian. If the two were presented for you to pick one, who will you pick? Samson, maybe I will choose to abstain. You choose to abstain. You won't pick any of them. Um, for now, I, I would abstain. OK. So Hajj, uh, Al-Hajj Suleiman, like your name, says, all the people who have been busted for corruption have been defended by Ken, with one of them being his campaign manager. Uh, Nanteti to uh, La Bianca, to PPA boss, to boss, uh, boss Alfred Obing, to Maritime. All these people were fiercely defended by him. It is difficult for any reasonable person to see such a person as a sincere man. Is it a, is it a view you share? I, I do, Samson. And, and, and beyond that, you know, the, the record around Ahmed Swale and all the other you know, comments that he's made in the past in 2016, 2020 elections, when, when we're doing the campaign language monitoring in terms of monitoring indecent expressions, expressions that could incite violence and so on. Ken was constantly in the lead. Among the top five people that were often cited, Ken was in the lead. His media organizations, you know, uh, in Accra and in Kumasi, were among those that were perpetrating these kinds of narratives. And I don't think that if it was something that he wasn't endorsing, it would have been happening. All right. So absolutely, he is not, he wouldn't be my preferred leader for this country. But as I've said, in terms of the masses, they look beyond these things and go with who is telling us the sweet things and is able to All right. indicate Thank that you. Thank you very much, Sleiman Brahima. Um, we'll take a break again and return to look at the question of the fight against Galamsey.